This is a story about unusual warriors and the most unlikely of heroes. This is about very poor women leading very simple lives in Bhutan who have made such an extraordinary difference to their own communities. It was the first time ever that the barefoot approach was tried in Bhutan. The old conservative established solar engineering community used to a top-down approach within the government were totally skeptical that this grassroots community-based bottom-up approach would ever succeed. This process created history in the country because it was the first time the district administration, the grassroots political leaders and the poor communities collectively were ever consulted to take major decisions. 35 barefoot women solar engineers have solar electrified the following villages in Bhutan. Jadingkha in Thimpu district, Gengkha Paro district, Yaba Ha district, Satakha Sibichang Tulungao in Samse district, Salamji Samarchu in Dagana district, Gogona in Wangdu Fodang district, Bhumi Dara in Sarpang district, Nadag Jangbi in Tongsa district, Gojong in Jemghang district, Chusa Shawa in Lunse district, Otola in Mongar district, Namkhari in Pema Gashel district, Bemo Porang in Samdrup Jongkha district. 900 families from 70 non electrified villages were visited in 15 districts covering the whole country in three months. The staff of the Barefoot College spent nights in the village, refusing to take any extravagant daily allowances, thus saving a lot of money. But more important, it gave them time to hear what the poor people, the actual users, had to say. In the process, 35 women were selected direct by the community. It was the first time in their lives they had ever left their village to come so far away to a strange country. The Indian ambassador gave them confidence before they left. The women from Himalayas travelled in a train and saw the desert for the first time. They lived on vegetarian food for six months. They showed extraordinary courage to come to a strange country in a strange land where they could not speak their own language and to learn about solar technology just using their hands, their practical skills their native intelligence to become solar engineers without using the written word. They learned through sign language how to fabricate charge controllers, inverters, install solar panels and link them to deep cycle batteries. They lived simply, worked together and in spite of the tremendous obstacles facing them, they never complained. With the money saved, they all managed to visit Bodh Gaya and even buy a mobile phone. On their return between May and June in 2008, within three months, all the solar units were distributed to the 500 houses in 48 villages all over Bhutan. Engineer, <laughs> The women solar warriors of Bhutan proved the impossible is possible. They each established a total of 18 rural electronic workshops in 13 districts, thus making it possible to carry out all major and minor repairs even before any solar units were installed in the villages. The villagers could not believe that women could climb and install solar panels on the roofs. A total of 35 kilowatts have been installed, saving 5,000 litres of kerosene every month and saving 80 tonnes of carbon emissions from polluting the environment. solar line solar line. 
for the first time in the history of any solar electrification work in Bhutan, and in keeping with the new policy of the royal government, very poor families have willingly agreed to pay between 40 to 60 rupees a month for the repair and maintenance. 48 villages have agreed in writing something unheard of in this country. What is unique has been the contribution of the rural communities agreeing to construct a workshop in the village at their own cost. Whole villages agreeing to transport the solar panels and batteries on their back, sometimes a two-day walk, free of charge. Agreeing to form a solar committee to make sure everyone pays their monthly contribution. How has solar lighting improved the quality of life? Farmers using lanterns at night to bring back lost animals and protect themselves against snake bites. Traditional midwives use the lanterns to deliver babies instead of using candles and torch batteries. The women now cook at night in the open with solar lanterns. They work on increasing their income by making handicraft items at home. Children study at night without damaging their eyes or harming their lungs from the fumes of kerosene lamps. Women do not have to walk for miles across the Himalayas to nearby towns to fetch 20 litres of kerosene. Never in the history of Bhutan has 48 remote inaccessible villages ever been solar electrified within a period of one year. Never in the history of Bhutan has 500 houses been solar electrified by 35 illiterate and semi-literate young women in the country. They are now the new solar warriors of Bhutan. The Solar Warriors have agreed to register the first ever Barefoot Solar Engineers Association of Bhutan. The hope and belief is that one day in the very near future the Royal Government decides to hand over all solar electrification work, including installation and repair and maintenance of all defunct solar units in the competent and confident hands of the Women Solar Warriors of Bhutan. I feel so, so deeply encouraged to see the confidence that, that, that has been, that these uh, women have in themselves and how contribute to their villages, to their families in such remote areas. Malu and no Malu. <laughs> that is lovely. <laughs> bring light, literally light into their lives. It's something which I am so proud of today. I'm absolutely moved. And I think for Bhutan to collaborate with India in, uh, in, in training our, uh, our village uh, ladies to become barefoot engineers is something which I think it's really a testament I think in the past we would have never imagined that our village ladies, that there is a sense of achievement, the sense of pride, they are recognized, <laughs> they feel so fulfilled. And in their fulfillment, the entire communities benefit. So uh, my gratitude to the Barefoot College and uh, my pride in the Barefoot Engineers. What the 35 extraordinary but very ordinary heroes have done is to set an example by demonstrating how the impossible is possible and contributed tangibly to the policy of gross national happiness in Bhutan. <laughs> Thank you.